Hello and welcome. I'm just going to show you the VIC modem from Commodore, named after you know the VIC-20 computer it was originally designed for. VIC-20 released in 1981 for about $300, and the modem followed in March 1982 for approximately $110. This does also work with the Commodore 64 computer, which is what I own. So I don't know if this is the original box that I have here. It may have been a reprint later. So the Commodore 64 released sometime in 1982, so they probably just you know reprinted the box to add Commodore 64 to it. Because the manual is where I got the release date, and it seems unusual they would know the release date in the first printing of the manual, but I can't say for certain. In any case, I can't demo this because it is from 1982. There'd be nothing to call, plus you need an old-style phone and a landline, two things I do not have. But this is a really early look at online technology. So everyone should be familiar with the internet today, which was around, I guess, for a, quite a while. I started using it in the, I guess, middle to late 90s. But it was around, I think, a little before that. But this, this is similar. It's not quite the same. Of course, it doesn't have as much. You can see on the back of the box, they mention you can go online and get stock quotes, investment reports, you know, research things, get news. Use the electronic post office, which should be about the same as email. And, you know, you could shop, you could buy any, almost anything from airline tickets to stereo equipment. And, of course, there's entertainment like games. You could look up wine information, astrological forecast. So you could do plenty of stuff, you know, for 1982. I didn't do any of that, though, so I can't really talk about that. I didn't use the online services since I did get this later when I inherited it, I think in 1987. I got it with the computer from my dad's uncle. So I can't really comment on CompuServe or other online services that were available. I did use the modem though. I just called individuals. So people could use this modem to host basically what was called a bulletin board. And you could call them and then you you know, you post messages on the board. You could play a game if they had one available. I do recall one game, I think it was called Empire, where it was text-based, where you'd, you'd tell it, I think you're, it's like a strategy game where you were defending or attacking kingdoms, I think. It's hard to remember, but I think you just basically told, you know, how many soldiers to attack and what user to attack. So if someone could attack me or I could attack any other user that used that bulletin board. And you log off, log back in the next day, and get the rundown on what happened. So, there was some entertainment to be had. You could download software too, whatever the user made available. But, that would of course likely have been pirated software, but at the time, I would have been about 12 years old and would not have known any better. So where does a 12 year old even get <laughs> numbers on who, on who to call? It was my neighbor. My neighbor was a little bit older than me in high school, so I think high school kids were the ones running bulletin boards out of their parents' homes, so other high school kids would have been a place to go to get the information on a whole list of phone numbers on who to call. I do still have my list. I have a list of over 20 boards I'd call. You know, it won't mean much to you, but just a bunch of names. Like People could name their board whatever they wanted. You know, one called theirs Thunderdome, another one Excalibur, another one Paisley Socks. So, basically, just any words you wanted that you could name your board. So, here's the modem. It's not very big. Grab my 6-inch ET ruler for a reference. So, it is only about 6 inches long and 2 and 3 quarter inches wide. And there's really not much on the modem itself. The interface, you plug into the computer, power light. This switch is for if you want to call or host, so if you want to receive calls, and then a port. And this is not what you plug this on into. This is the kind of phone wire that would go directly to the wall, to the jack. But this is bigger than what goes here. As you can tell on the front of the box, now, although I don't have a phone, <laughs> I do have a cord. This is what plugs into it. So you'd remove the handset from the phone and then just plug that directly into the modem, which is a little different. That's why I was showing you 
this because this is probably what people would think of first if you had a modem in the 90s. Most of those you would have taken the phone itself, the part that would normally go to the wall jack, and plug that into your modem and another cord from the modem to the wall. This worked a bit differently as the phone went directly to it. Now, for comparison, as far as speeds, this is a 300 baud modem, which is 300 bits per second. I was trying to come up with speed comparisons to get a better understanding of how slow or fast, but slow is the keyword, this is. So, if you had a modem in the 90s, it was probably you know a 28k to 56k dial-up, depending on you know, how good your phone service was. I had a 28k modem that I played for the first time an online shooter in 1999 and 28k is about a hundred times faster than this so if you know how slow 28k is you get understanding this is you'd understand how much a hundred times slower it would be and if you're not familiar with dial-up modems try to get a good comparison for cable modem so cable modem speeds do vary but you know your standard $50 a month subscription gets you a service that it's probably 35,000 times faster than this. So, yeah, this is slow, but at the same time, you're not connecting to an internet full of stuff. I mean, there wouldn't be high-definition images or videos. Nothing like that. It would mostly be text-based, so the speed didn't matter too much unless you were downloading software. Maybe, I don't know if there were games that you played that were more than text-based, but... Yeah, you could get by okay on slow speeds back then, of course. So you also get a cassette tape with the modem. The cassette tape, it's not an audio tape. It actually holds software, which old cassettes did. They sold games on cassettes. I don't own any. I don't have the cassette adapter for the Commodore 64, which is required. So one side is VIC-20 software, the other Commodore 64 software. But you only need the software if you're hosting. Since I never did that, you know, I, I could just make outgoing calls without software. Okay, so here's all the documentation. Originally it was packaged in the Ziploc bag. I just pulled it out from to get easier access here. And this here is not any part of this. <laughs> this is a piece of a Bradley's ad. And it, it shows a... What, a computer table was back then or a computer desk they call it a table it's really basic but it, it has what you need I think my dad's uncle did buy this because it looks identical to the one we got with the computer this would have been $39 on sale in any case this is a magazine card that looks like somebody used this is the warranty card not really too interesting I get to, I'll save the manual for last here I got some CompuServe stuff. This is for subscribing to CompuServe. I didn't scan this, but I did scan the warranty card and everything else, except only part of the manual. This is more CompuServe information rate and phone numbers and just general information on CompuServe. So, like I said, I scanned everything like this, which can be found on my blog. I'll have a link in the video description if you want to read these things. I just get a closer look at photographs of the modem. And this one here starts with information about the Commodore network. And it just lists a few other things you get, like program of the month, and programming tips, Commodore newsletter, and some other stuff like a coupon to a store I'm not familiar with, CompU Card of America. So for the manual, I scan the first few pages because I think they're the most interesting and most fun to read. Because I think, I think it's fun to look back at old technology when we're so much far farther advanced than what, what this was. I mean, it's hard to imagine if you didn't live it to know just how, how where everything started. I mean, this wasn't the first modem, of course. CompuServe actually was founded in 1969, so people were going online in the 70s, too. Here's where it says it took a total of six months from concept to production, and in March 1982, the first Vic modems were delivered for sale. Then it goes on to describe what is electronic communications, because for most people, this would have been their first modem. Science fiction is now reality, and then 
tells you more about the subscription service and what you get. So I scanned up to this page, I believe. But if there's demand for it, someone really wants to read the whole manual, it's around 20, 24 pages, I believe, with the front and back cover. I could scan it if someone really wants to read the whole thing. Not a problem. Just the blog post already had so many images, and I didn't think the full manual was that much fun to read beyond the first few pages. All right, let me just plug it into the commenter here for demonstration. Or as much as I can demo. Obviously, like I said, I can't make any calls. So this is a Commodore 64. And this is where the modem plugs in. It doesn't go in very far. Just like that. And although my Commodore isn't working, it does power on. So just turn it on here. All you'll see is the red light. And I believe I covered everything. If I missed anything, it'll be in the blog post. So check that out if you'd like. And thanks for watching.